Last year, two very significant events happened. One, Trump won the presidency in the US. Two, Brexit happened. Lots of people can't explain either of these events, why they took place. And a reason for that is that we live today in an ever more fractured media reality. People don't read the same news. People don't participate in the same groups. We are split across many different information channels. There's Facebook, there's YouTube, there are newspapers, there's radio, there's television. We find ourselves in a position where it's hard to make sense of reality in just one way. And that's a good thing, actually, because it means that people can access the information that they care about. But it also brings with it some problems. Fake news has been in everybody's mouths. Um, everybody talks about how it was responsible for bringing these events about. And it is true to a degree. Fake news is a problem. But what is not understood is that fake news has always been a problem. It's just now been democratized. People are now able to manufacture information in such a simple and cheap and effective way that it's become a whole industry. And why? Because the current institutions, the current corporations that we give our data to are using this data to exploit us. Their interest is not to give us more access to better features and, uh, and help us lead our lives better just because they're so friendly and so nice. Their incentive is to make us spend as much time as possible on these platforms, generate as much data as possible about our own lives and about the relationships we have with other people in order to exploit that data to then serve us more of the same more of the same preferences, more of the same relationships, more of the same information, so that we have a stable emotional reaction to the things that stream towards us every day from the internet. And that is very profitable because it means we become predictable, we become locked into our existing reality that, pre -confir that confirms our pre-existing biases and yeah, makes us less of who we are. The problem here is not that these services exist. Facebook does fulfill a useful function. It does make it easier to communicate with people all over the world. It does make it easier to spread information across people. The same is true for Google. Google has a very useful service. It allows you to look up information everywhere, find things in matters of seconds, and allow you to basically outsource your memory to the internet. But both of these corporates both of these big institutions and others like them, they exist because it has been so far impossible to make large groups of people work together in a way that is not exploitable, that is intelligent, that makes sense, that makes meaning, that allows everybody to have an incentive to have both their own interest and the interest of groups, of the group that they participate in in mind. And so, what we've seen over the course of history is we outsource our authority, our relationships, everything that we care about, we entrust this to other people, organizations, that when they have this power, they, when they have access to this data, this information, this trust, they abuse it. They take it and they use it to extract value from us and play against our own interests. It's the same with government right now. Lots and lots of people do not feel represented by their governments. We see more and more sovereignty movements in different parts of the world. Catalonia, Scotland, um, England as well from the British Union, uh, from the European Union. All of these smaller political bodies feel like they're not represented by the larger groups that they adhere to. And this not only applies to the groups, it also applies to the individual. I do not feel represented by my politicians. I do not feel like what I think about the world is probably properly being represented by them in Parliament. And that's always the case. You can never have everything that you want. But the current situation is that these are, in a sense, technologies that have been necessary so far, but that have resisted upgrades, have resisted 
being replaced by better technologies and for a very good reason because technologies are fickle things. Whoever controls them has a lot of power. And so in history, when you look back, it used to be the case that religion was the binding force that made us cohere as groups. It also used to be the thing that makes us go to wars. This is no longer the case in the Western world, but it still is the case, for example, for the Islamic world. Now, today we've kind of seen this split, especially in the 20th century, from religion being the sole cohering force to we have on the one hand ideologies, and on the other hand technology that are in a symbiotic cycle that make each other work. Ideologies give technology the, the motive power, the, 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 the interest, the habits of individuals for it to become predictable for technology. And technology makes groups cohere around certain habits as well that then uh, legitimize specific ways of looking at the world. So the technology that makes Bitcoin work is the blockchain. It's a software technology, basically, that makes it so that for the first time in history, I can trust that when I send you something, you can know that it is yours and not just mine anymore. So this works in a financial sense, where I send you some kind of token, some kind of cryptocurrency that allows you to trust that only you have that and not me anymore. But it also works for other technologies, not only the financial world. Blockchain makes it possible that, for example, if I buy a steak in a restaurant, I can know that at every step of its journey from the Argentinian beef that uh, supplied it, it has gone through the right refrigeration cycles and has uh, originated from grass-fed uh, cows, etc. So what it does is it allows us to take the trust problem away from individual institutions and into a network of individuals and groups that then participate in this network and make it work. And the blockchain itself is now being used for more and more applications. There are people playing around with AI and blockchain, people trying to use it for uh, transacting energy markets, um, all kinds of things that are very useful that blockchain makes interestingly possible without having to rely on individual institutions that can always fail, that can always abuse the trust that you give them. So by taking this trust into the system itself rather than individual organizations, we solve this problem of having our value extracted from us. Now, blockchain itself has some problems. It's a, an inherently inefficient technology and it's supposed to be this way so that uh, data cannot arbitrarily be copied and that way we gain a lot of security, a lot of the ability to trust the network. But this is also very wasteful in terms of energy. So there is a natural limit to what blockchain can do just by the architectural design of itself. And there are people working on new systems that take the best of what Bitcoin, blockchain and other systems like torrenting have achieved and make it useful in a new way, combined in a new way that makes new forms of interaction possible. And one of these technologies is Holochain. Holochain takes a very different approach to how it tries to secure data, which is basically what blockchain does as well. Instead of taking a data-centric approach, where you put all of the data to all of the nodes and try to secure it in a way that makes it very hard, very cost, costly to change the data. You, with Holochain, you put all of that data into every individual node and only that data that they care about. So it takes the agent-centric approach. When I do something that is part of an app or part of a network, part of something where I interact with other people, I write my transactions, my interactions, my changes to the data that I interact with to my own chain. So I have my copy on my computer. 
And when I interact with other people, this data gets replicated to them and to the other people who participate in that specific app, not in the whole blockchain that supports all of these different apps. And so using this approach, Holochain achieves a far greater effectiveness or cost effectiveness and efficiency and throughput that blockchain cannot achieve just by this little architectural twist. Now, I'm mostly excited about this not because, oh, it's, it's so great or whatever, but just because it enables individuals to go take part in a group, work with that group, and then if they don't agree with that group anymore about something, be it the smallest thing or the biggest thing, take their data, take what they did with the group, with them, and go to a different group. And so the system has exit automatically built into itself. When you don't agree with something, you can take your toys and go to another playground. Um, with blockchain, that's not exactly possible, or at least it's, it's more difficult, it's more expensive. And when you participate in an app, an app on blockchain is controlled by the developer or the, the person who built it, and you have very little ability to change this. Um, and it's very hard to change contracts that are on the Ethereum blockchain, for example, once they have gone live. So Holochain apps, they are inherently evolvable. So when a new version becomes available, you just have this thing uh, in, in the, the chain that points to a new chain. Oh, this is a new version. Do you want to join us in this new version? It's always asking, do you want to join? Do you want to participate in this new way? And so the philosophy that underlies this is really built upon individual agency as part of a greater collective intelligence. So when I interact with you, what we're doing is we're enhancing each other's agency through giving each other respect. Like I have the ability to play with you. We can share our toys as long as it makes sense for us. And when we don't want to play with each other anymore, we can take our toys and go. Apps that are built on Holochain, they can take over the role that usually these institutions play, or at least a large part of the role, where Facebook, Google, Amazon, all of these big corporates, these big institutions, get their size from concentrating all that data and, and extracting value from it for themselves. We can now use these apps, these new ways of arranging groups with each other, give, and, and then leave the value that we as individuals generate in the, our own hands and still make the group work. And so that's what really excites me, where we can see how these big institutions are going to be getting competition from social organisms in a sense, really just flocking behavior. You can think of it more like a swarm of birds that coalesces around a certain shared goal, they achieve that goal and then they go outside again, they, they, they leave each other again. So the main value that all of these big corporations provide is rule sets, incredibly sophisticated rules that we have to follow in order to work with each other in a huge scale of cooperation. Now, they succeed because they have the ability to structure these rule sets, evolve them, extract value from the people that agree to them, and grow and grow and grow from adding more and more people. The same thing, though, can take place when these rule sets become alterable, evolvable at the edge of the network rather than at the center. When you have one center making decisions, everybody has to go with what the center wants in order to participate still in the network of the whole corporation. Now, with Holochain, you can form a group that exists for a specific purpose, that agrees to specific rules, and then can evolve its own purpose, can evolve its own rules very organically. And so that way, 
more and more functionality that these big behemoths provide through superior access to capital and through uh, great corporate uh, organization and through tax breaks and political favors, all of these things they have to pull in to actually succeed. We can provide now with this kind of digital fabric, this digital social fabric that allows people to provide these same services to each other on a peer-to-peer -peer basis without having to trust and be dependent on these larger groups. And so using Holochain, we can build food drives, we can uh, play with hosting networks, we can have a decentralized YouTube, we can uh, build entrepreneurial ventures that don't have to rely on the existing infrastructure but can just start from their own place. And so my hope with this is that we will see a Cumbrian explosion of social forms that are going to slowly gnaw at the the niche that these big players have built up for themselves and take the power away from centralized institutions and make everything work much more decentralized. And that way we will have less of these crises, less of these boom and bust cycles that destroy livelihoods, that destroy entire societies and instead have a much more peaceful, a much more stable society, global so stable society that it that exists in cooperation with its individual members and slowly gains in trust between everybody. Because that's really what makes the world go round. Trust and really fabricating it, manufacturing it is so hard that so far we've only been able to use these big, big centralized institutions to do it. Now we have a different option. So I use social media a lot, <laughs> like many people do, but I try to do it in a way that makes it advantageous to me, that fights those algorithms that have <laughs> not my best interest in mind. And uh, so if you want to join me in that kind of venture and want to learn how to do that, and you want to get in touch, feel free to reach me on Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, I'm also on YouTube, Instagram, all these different platforms. Um, and yeah, reach out, let's chat. Um, I'm interested in building new projects. I like to give presentations. I like to chat about all of these different subjects. Do research and if you have ideas about what, what apps, what programs, what groups we would like to see in the future, we can, we can talk about that.